and that is either ready to go back on the shelf or ready to hit the trails and go out and do some bashing. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today I'd like to talk to you about the service and maintenance on your VRX Octane or in fact nearly any ready to run car but we'll focus today on Octane because that's what I've got in front of me. These are a really popular model and yeah let's walk through, I'll take you a walk through, a couple of things to check, uh, how I clean them and yeah what to look for and keep it in tip top shape and running the best it can. Okay so this one you can see here it's had a good run it's got a lot of dirt and muck and stuff all over it. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how many batteries it's had, but it's definitely need of a bit of a tidy up. So the first thing we'll do is start by taking off the body, of course. We'll get that out of the way. Um, and at this point, I usually like to take the battery out and I'll either discharge the battery um, or in fact, I'll, I'll charge it up and, and get it ready to use. So we'll get that out of the way. Do these straps back up and uh, have a bit of a look over. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll go through the drive line um, and it's nice and smooth, nothing seems to be clicking, there's no abnormal noises. All the wheels seem to be spinning and rotating through the diffs and yeah, and I know that this one here was, was straight off the, off, the, off the park trail, straight, straight off the bashing track and there was no dramas with it. So let's have a look at the first things that I'll do. First thing that I'll do in this case is get the wheels off. Um, and that's something I like to do just so I can get at more of the chassis and get a bit of an idea of, of how the wear and tear of the car is going. Um, in this case, I'll usually put the wheel nut on a couple of turns just to ensure that nothing can, can slide off while I'm moving the car around. Because sometimes you have to be careful of the wheel hexes um, and the drives because they can, they can slip off um, and be lost on the floor those nuts back on. You can see here in fact how much space it's opened up for for cleaning and maintenance. Go ahead and take these two off. Now for this I'm just using our nine steps uh, essentials toolkit, five piece toolkit and that's pretty much got everything in there. I need to work on this VRX Octane. Got a seven mil hex wrench here getting the, getting the wheels off. Good thing is that they're all, they're all tight and secure. So obviously that's something that you need to check in between runs as well, is keep, keep on top of your, your wheel nuts, ensure that they're tight. Last thing you wanna do is lose a wheel, um, or like I said, the wheel hex, the drive pin. Then I'm gonna have a more detailed look at the chassis and look for any screws that are, are missing and, and hanging out. Look for anything that's bent look for any major oil leaks from the, the shock absorbers um, and now the wheels are off I can in fact articulate the suspension one piece at a time to ensure smooth running and there's nothing binding or bent the front feels good the rear is a little bit hard because it's not fully independent but we can get that up you can see that it's working well then both together perfect so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start cleaning it. Um, and for this, it's as simple as uh, an old paintbrush, uh, an old toothbrush, and I've actually got our nine steps gizmo kit here. And these are good little plastic, plastic tool kit. And that's really good for scraping off all this hard mud and dirt and getting it out of the way. Now you can see I'm working over a, a pit mat and that's to protect, it does a couple things. A, it protects the work surface and B, it creates a, uh, a little bit of a cush or soft barrier in case something does does fall off it won't bounce off the table and and run away so I'm just going around scraping off all this hard mud and crud getting the bulk of it off just with that got a few different tools here with a few different tips and adjustments now this kind of mud and dirt buildup is very normal on these cars um, sort of what they were made for in many ways and it just pays every now and then to like I said to clean it off and give it a good check over especially if you want it to to last a long time and perform well because there's usually a direct correlation to how well you service and maintain it to how well it will perform and indeed how long the car will last and the secret is is to actually um, buy spare parts or change parts 
before they actually break. They'll usually wear, they'll usually wear and tear and, and wear out before they actually just fail. So this gives you a good indication of your car. And the main reason I'm cleaning it first is so I can in fact get my uh, Allen keys and tools into the screws, get the mud out of the way. Because I'm going to check them over and make sure that they're all nice and tight. So it's nothing too hard. You can see here we've got a few dandelions, got a bit of red mud. On this side as well. These plastic tools are fantastic because they don't gouge the plastics, do any damage. They're quite forgiving, um, at the same time quite robust. Make sure there's no stones jammed in anywhere, nothing's clicking like this one here. Got a stone in here, pop that out. Okay, now the, the rear does usually get more muddy because it's the front wheels that, that flick it up over the back. And you can see already, just in a couple of minutes, the amount of dirt and debris that I've managed to clean out. I've got a, an old rag here. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over it now with a the old paintbrush and this is just to help get the dust off um, and really get the aesthetics up. Brushing away and that is about it and you can see already how the car has, has transform, transformed from, from a, the muddy bash that it was into something resembling a nice clean car. So I'm just going to use these wheels here as a bit of a car stand get it up off the, the dirty table. Now at that point I'm going to get out my Allen keys and I'm going to check over a few of the screws. Now the main ones are going to be on, on the chassis and on parts that move. So I've got the steering post screws, bulkhead screws, motor case screws, which are all nice and tight. Then I'm going to check for the, the moving parts. So we've got our steering linkage and I'm making sure that nothing's bent there. And again, it's all just a two mil hex wrench from my nine steps essential toolkit. Little check over, a lot of them are not needing any adjustment, which is fan really fantastic. Nothing loose or hanging out. These cars are really well made. And this servicing and maintenance part is a big part of the hobby because things will naturally come loose bend and break and it's important to stay on top of it to make sure you have trouble free operation. Okay so all that's done now the next one I'm going to have a look at is the the ones in the bottom. Now these are the ones that you might struggle a little bit to get your allen key in and that's because of the mud that gets packed up in there and for this I'm using an old worn and rubbish hobby knife but a pin's just as good Give that a little scrub with the hard brush. Now what this does is not only allows my Allen key to get in there and a really good purchase, it looks after the hex wrench and the screw itself. Because um, if I was just going in with a half packed of mud, chances are I would tip, strip the, the top of the screw and damage and cause wear and tear on the, the hex wrench. You can see here all these chassis screws are absolutely tight, which is great to see. Got the motor mount here. Okay, now tip it on the front bumper bar. Now we'll have a look over the rear suspension. And the same thing, put a bit of mud in these screws here. And you can see how long I'm, sp I'm spending. It's not hours and hours of cleaning and maintenance. In fact, it's something that can be done while the battery's on charge, sort of in between runs, if you're, if you're at home. Um, another important point on these octanes is this rear drive shaft here. It's really cool and really scale looking, this live rear axle. Um, I'm just going to check over these, these grub, screws, grub screws on the universals and ensure that they are secure. And of course, they are nice and tight. Okay, now one of the last screws I'm going to check over is going to be the shock screws. Now obviously the that's where the car does a lot of its up and down bouncing. You can see the amount of, on the rear shock tower on the Octane, 
the plethora of adjustments. So it's even a good time if you wanted to experiment or change the shock angle and see in fact how it handles, how it changes the handling of the car and the characteristics. That's exactly why they're there, to encourage you to, to do some tuning and get the car handling your terrain the way you like it. So that is as simple as that. Now, the, one of the last things I'm gonna do before I get onto the polishing part of it is I've got a little bit of bearing oil here. Uh, machine oil is fine, light machine oil. I'm just gonna put a couple of drops on the back of the motor bush. Now, they're not a ball race motor, they're a bronze bush, and they do require um, a little bit of oil every now and then. And that's to help it keep running smooth, efficient, and, and cool as well. Now we've got our drive shafts. They're all in really good nick, none of them are bent. We've got our steering assembly here, a servo. Again, nothing was loose from the bottom or the top. I'm just giving a bit of a check over. Everything is really good. I'm gonna check the steering screw here with my Phillips head. Here it is, my trusty Phillips head. It's gonna ensure, because the servo horns are prone to coming loose and this one it's not fantastic that is beautiful so what I like to do then is I'll take my WD-40 or any sort of light spray lubricant and I will spray it on my old paintbrush here and then I can work that over the car now what that does is keeps all the plastics in really good nick um, adds a bit of shine to it and make it look like it's been been cared and loved for. Um, it also can help the dirt not stick to it in the future. Um, and initially, that the, the dirt will slide off and it'll be easier to clean next time. Like I said, as well as adding that, that new RC shine. So you don't have to go too mad with it. You don't want to spray it directly because you don't really want to get it in all the joints and the pivot points too much because um, it can in fact bind them up if it gets full of mud. Just light like that over the drive shafts and again the WD-40 or the, the light penetrine spray will in fact um, keep the metal surfaces in, in a good condition. Um, and help protect them from corrosion such as rust and and tarnish and that sort of stuff because if you've ever played with these down at the beach you'll notice or the salt anywhere like salty you'll notice immediately if you don't use a WD-40 or a penetrine they will start to oxidize straight away um, and rust all over so it's as simple as that just a couple minutes quick little brush over There we have it. Then I take a, just an old rag, this one here, it's a bit of microfiber. And again, I'll rub it over just to ensure that I haven't put too much anywhere. Really work it in. There we have it. So now, I suppose the last thing that I'll do is I'll scrape the mud off of the wheels if there's any built up. And this one's pretty good, doesn't really have too much on. The wheels are pretty prone to, to fling it off, obviously, because they rotate so fast. We can go ahead and screw our wheels back on. Um, this car here, the Octane, doesn't really have a front and a rear. All four are the same. Um, so you can't really get it, get it really very wrong. Just gonna put this, you can see the amount of dirt and crud that's come off this car. Octane's pretty good and you can sit it safely upside down on the body post to work on it. Go ahead and put our wheels back on. Ensure that they locate on the hexes. And we'll do them back up. Nice and smooth operation across the back axle here. OK, 
Okay, just do a final check over the wheels once they're all on. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to use the um, WD-40 like a bit of tire shine. Again, on my old paintbrush here. Paint this on the sidewalls. Give it that showroom shine. <laughs> And there we go. So now it's as simple as popping the battery back in, if that's what we're gonna do. Get it all nice and secure. At this point, I always like to, after I've worked on the car, I like to turn it back on, even if I'm not playing with it straight away. And um, give it a good check over and make sure that I've indeed caused no damage or done anything wrong. We'll plug this one back in. We'll get the radio on and we'll carry out a few final tests. Power's up. The steering's working beautifully. The drivetrain's working beautifully and it's all sitting correctly. I'll go ahead, I'll turn it off. I always unplug it when I'm finished using it. And that is either ready to go back on the shelf or ready to hit the trails and go out and do some bashing. So that's how I'll service and maintain the Octane. Thanks for watching.